in how is it going everyone and welcome tomorrow i wanna be the citadel and to this soprano dude why do you put a soprano in the main uh, screen you know that i was planning to play this game like a week ago but well Part of the fact that I didn't do it is because it didn't have full screen support and it was already time to stream and I didn't want to change it. But the other part is that Soprano, dude. I listened to that and I'm like, I don't want to play this, right? <laughs> and the Soprano has nothing to do with the rest of the game, so that's what makes it even more ridiculous. It's like a filter that is there for no reason. But that's okay. Um, I also feel like it might have been a bad idea to leave... Um, to leave this game for today. Because... I mean... Probably the bad idea wasn't leaving it for today, but rather like starting playing this song because I don't really think there's much left maybe I'm wrong you never know I mean after all it says that it's the zone 8 1 so you never know there will be an 8 2 and an 8 3 and more I doubt it mostly because this is a scrolling section usually when you see something like this in an I wanna be the guy game it tends to be the final area of the game before the final boss because that's how it was in the original I wanna be the guy after all basically had the tower of the guy which was a vertically scrolling elevator and then the fight against the guy that was the, the final boss nice See how long the rest will take, but I think that that checkpoint was the one that was specifically painful. The other, the, the other three, I think, because it, they are three, right? Like you have a, a save there, and then you have another save up there. So technically, it's three checkpoints. I don't know if they are gonna be as painful as that one, but again, I, I, I guess it's one of those things where. When you're streaming for for some time, you know you just have you, you just get a little bit tired, and even checkpoints like the one I just did become very hard. When in reality they are not that big of a deal, you know. But yeah, I, at the same time I think that. <laughs> doing this yesterday maybe wouldn't have worked out. It would be very sad if I can beat the whole well, whatever is remaining of the game in like 20 minutes. It will be quite sad. But that's okay. Not the first time it will happen, to be honest. I'm very good at calculating that sort of stuff, but that's fine. Yeah, honestly, these champs don't look as painful as they looked yesterday. I think that I'm, I should be fine. Probably. Maybe. Is it going drain not? I'm here saying that it might have been a bad idea to leave this for today. I'm most likely gonna beat it relatively fast. Maybe. I still don't know how much is left, but I don't think there is that much left. 
and how is it going, Rayman? It's one of those things, right? But that's fine. Okay, got it. Uh, so what do we have here? A gate sham. That's it. Because the rest doesn't look that hard. Well, the, the rest is just regular shams unless there is a trap. You fell back into the MMO rabbit hole. But which one? Oh shit! Oh, there is actually more! So, I, I, am, I, I am great. I am actually great. See? You thought that 8 1 was gonna be the last one, but no. So, what exactly kills you here? I guess if you destroy a monitor and you're too close to it. No, I think the. If you go to a monitor that is broken, you die. So that means that this is sort of like a labyrinth. Final Fantasy XIV, then Lost Dark, then try now Ragnarok Online. <laughs> well, on the bright side, I kinda doubt that you are gonna like Ragnarok Online, so at least there is that. But you can probably count one less. You never know though, but I, I highly doubt it. Oh, this looks actually hard to do. Because the monitors you shoot basically block the path. And there are a lot of them. This smells like trouble. Oh, I'm stupid. Why did I do that? As long as you get to the crosshair, you die. It should be from top to bottom once you reach this place, right? Probably. This screen being a bit of a moment to get past. It looks quite hard. How is it going, Wasabi? I guess I did uh, make the right decision yesterday on leaving this for today because <laughs> if it like if the last stage was 8-1, then clearly it might have been a bad decision. But if there is more like this, then yeah. Pretty clearly, it was the right decision. The problem with this is that I'm pretty much completely blocking the left side. Probably not a good idea. Those champs here, I probably should do this once first. These champs are garbage. Okay, though Ragnar will be as bad as some of the other shit I played. It's all, that's what you need to take into account. It's going good, you started playing the new Project Diva game and I love it already, although I still suck. <laughs> hey, don't worry about it. I mean, keep in mind that I started playing that game on normal. At the beginning, I barely even touched the... I barely even touched the... the hard difficulty. But yeah, it's a game that... the, the only trick is to... It, it really is to play more. There's not much to do. Well. Another advice that I think is useful is really check your delay. Is that something that depends on a lot of things, right? So make sure you have the right delay set up. I'm doing this the wrong way, am I? Yeah, probably. Damn it. 
Also, how is it going blue? You already configure the delay nice. Yeah, though keep in mind that the delay that the game tells you is not very good. Like there is a a tool that the game gives you that like auto configures the delay. I wouldn't use that if I was you because it's not very accurate. Uh, at least not to me. Like basically just so you can see how it is to me like I use a delay of minus 20 and it works very good well with that test my delay was going to positive <laughs> which you know it's quite far from what it should be but I wouldn't say that you should trust that test very much I mean, I'm not saying that it will never work, but in my case, it did not work. Maybe it will work in your case, perhaps, but in my case, it did not work. No, I'm dead. I'm dead. Okay, I really need to do. I, I need to do this first, dude. Like, I, I, I'm stupid. I'm not doing this first, and I should be. It's clearly the most painful one to do. Ah, oh, fuck. Man. This ceiling or whatever they are called, shumps, are so fucking annoying. Yeah, I think that's the strat. Or it should be. Only the bottom ones are remaining, aren't they? Get on. <laughs> nice. That's how you do it. Sega owes you a check for that referral. <laughs> That's okay. I mean, they already gave me everything I wanted to with, uh, with that game. They go by multiple names, like hiking champs, but I like to call them bonk champs. <laughs> bonk champs seems nice. I wonder what happens if you get that corner champ here. Nothing. Not even a clap? Are you for real? Most games, when you get a useless corner champ like this, they clap. Why am I not getting clapped? Damn it. That's evil. How is that possible? Okay, Bonk Shumps. That's a good name. I think I prefer Ceiling Shumps, but... Bonk Shumps sounds funnier, obviously. Now, imagine how bad of an idea it would have been to pick the hard difficulty of this game that apparently has way harder shams. Now that would have been a problem. I mean, I'm already struggling with a lot of these shams. Imagine how it would have been. Also, the this particular song is very quiet. Nice. Oh, and this is a horizontal scroll uh, stage. Wait. Is this a diamond champ? Are you for real? You want me to do a diamond champ? <laughs> no, come on. Why? Why a diamond champ? Yeah, Chaos Mode, that's how it's called. Chaos Mode apparently ramps up the needle by a little bit. And as you can see, I'm already struggling with this sort of needle. I mean, something like a Diamond Shunt to me is quite complex already. 
So, yeah, I cannot imagine something harder. Or rather, I cannot imagine beating something harder. You see, I can imagine playing champs like three diagonals in a row, you know, corner champs everywhere. I can imagine that. But yeah, I'm not beating that, that's pretty clear. I wouldn't be surprised if I saw a double diamond champ. Ooh, I got that on the first try. I mean, that, that F champ. I think that's an F champ, right? Can't really figure it out with this layout, but it looks like an F champ. is something else. And you know, the thing is that a game like Crimson Needle, for example, it's a game that I've been like, you know, it's clear that the other Crimson Needle games, I cannot beat them, but hey, maybe the first one. And then I saw there was a plane champ that the game expects you to do. And no, <laughs> no thank you. I think it's called Super F, but only if the ceiling is lower to make it harder. I see, so that might be a regular F. But yeah, I think that if a fan game expects me to do a normal plain champ without any sort of assistance, then that game is not for me. Lord 92 existing Crimson Needle 1. Yeah, I, I don't know the specifics, but you know, the guy that raided me yesterday, I remember looking at his thumbnail, the, the thumbnail of the stream, and in one of the... one of the champs was a plain champ. And I'm like, no. <laughs> there is no way I can do this. In fact, I think I never done a plain champ in my life, ever. Like, I don't think I ever done one. Thankfully, none of the games that I play require to do one, or one that is uh, like a regular plain champ instead of a nerf one, or one that had water or an elevator in between. But yeah, a regular plain champ never did it ever. The multiple upward planes, known downwards. I see. Yeah, no, I, I don't think I've done even one. Just one of those things that it's <laughs> a little bit above my level. I mean, maybe after a thousand attempts, I can do one. But yeah, if that's in the middle of a fun game, then no, that that's not a good idea. Because obviously that's one champ of the many that are going to be in the game. Not to mention that it's also probably in the middle of a checkpoint. Not like there is going to be one checkpoint dedicated to only one plane, right? So, yeah. That's the reason why I really cannot play needle games that are... <laughs> that are probably more than 50 points or of difficulty or whatever. You know. Something that is just not in me. You never know. See, there is one thing that we are not thinking about, right? But consider this situation. There is some major issue globally. I don't know which one, but there is something that happens globally, right? And that forces services like Steam to stop working. And not just Steam, but things like Amazon web servers or whatever, right? So imagine the amount of games that you won't be able to access. So at that point, you can only play games like this. 
Games that basically are an executable that runs in your computer and that's the end of that, right? So maybe if an event like that were to happen, maybe that will motivate me to get good enough to to do those sort of shams. And since I don't see that happening... Okay. Damn, that was a bait. Fuck. Well, not like these champs are very hard. But yeah, imagine that. Okay. Fuck. Yeah, Choco Choco. I actually played that. People told me to play it because it was iconic. And I did. Pretty... Pretty interesting. How is it going, Colon? I'm preparing for the end of the internet. <laughs> you never know. But what you do know is that games like this are the only ones you will be able to play. Unless you have a, a game crack. Which, you know, it's entirely possible. That was a good one. I must admit that was a good trap. Even better than the toasty trap. That, that was a good one. I I must admit. Very, very well done. Did you hear about the problem of your 2038? Yeah, about the, um, the dates express in a specific data type not being able to be displayed properly that's not an issue dude that's the same scare that some people had in 2000 it's gonna be sorted out don't worry about it i mean it's not gonna be something that is important enough. I mean, Stain's Gate is based on. Yeah, but Stain Gates is, you know, probably written by someone that doesn't have. Well, no, quite the opposite, actually. It might be written by someone that knows about it but also knows that uh, his readers will not know about it. Yeah, that might be the case. I mean, after all, if you're a writer, you can basically get away with describing shit that might not make much sense, but since your, your readers wouldn't know any better, you know, maybe. That champ looks hard. Mm. Looks a little bit nasty, yeah. That's okay. But yeah. Um, the thing is that every company that is worth their salt probably already mitigated that. And every company that hasn't done that yet is eventually gonna do that. I mean, prepare for that by using a more robust data type. And the companies that won't do anything and will get affected by it either are the companies that don't matter. Oh yeah. What's this? Infinite Champ, okay. And Infinite Champ Needle it's a little bit far from being my favorite, you know? I mean, I didn't say anything about Stain Gates, I said about his rider. The world is going to end in 2012.
After that, that's a hard one. That's a gate chunk where you need to kind of stay in the middle of the bottom two spikes and then you have another gate chunk later. This looks hard. Well, I mean, infinite champ needle is quite hard by definition, you know. So it is to be expected. SpongeBob will be aluminium can. Not SpongeBob. Anything but SpongeBob. You know, I remember when I was, I don't know, 12, something like that, pretty much in like the year, like, let's say that at the end of the 2000s decade, right, around there. Like, somewhere there. I remember reading a newspaper article about uh, global warming, right? And I remember that the article said that in 2020 there will be cities like some of the cold cities in Florida or Greenland that will be submerged under the water. Yeah, I don't see that happening. I mean, there were two years since that year and I don't think it happened. So yeah, basically what I'm trying to say is that people really like to fear monger. Uh, regardless of the topic, right? In this case, is climate change. In other cases, is like that, uh, you know, Aztec or whoever was prediction that the world was gonna end. Then you have technological shit like the one that Colo mentioned about the day times uh, being uh, overflowed, right? At the end of the day, this is just fear mongering because they know it sells. So the best thing you can do is uh, ignore that because it's worthless. Just like the journalist that wrote it. Uh, worthless. Of no value, basically. So don't, uh, don't buy it. It's not... it's not good. That's the bullshit I like to read. Well, I mean, reading that stuff in... in fiction can be exciting. As you mentioned, Stains Gate, you know. It's interesting. I mean, after all, fiction is all about immersing yourself in a... in a fantasy world whether that fantasy world is closer to our world or more, you know, far from it, like a lot of medieval fantasies, right? That's something that is not important because at the end of the day, it's a fantasy, so that's fine. The issue is when you see a journalist seriously writing that in a serious newspaper or news outlet or whatever. That's the issue. Uh, you know, because that's basically... That's basically... You're pretty much an enemy of humanity, you know? Well, most journalists are by definition, but... Yeah, you're pretty much someone that needs to be dealt with. Like, retiring yourself from the journalist position is the minimum. But yeah. 
that's the issue that I take with it. Yeah, advocating against nuclear energy is another topic that is so stupid. Apparently nuclear energy is very... well, the, the, regardless of it, if it is more efficient than conventional methods, it's still a method that, you know, works and, you know, some people are having energy crisis. Not investing into a technology that can solve that just because it has the word nuclear in it. It's a little bit stupid, yes. Almost on the weekly there is some new asteroid threat. Yeah, that's another thing, right? Uh, that's the other fear-mongering strat. Oh, there is gonna be a... a rock from space that is gonna destroy us. No, it won't. The odds for that are not very high. There is some philosophical shit I tend to think about. Climate change doesn't really matter because the world will explode one day. No, that's not a philosophical... I wouldn't call that philosophical. Well, I guess technically, but dude, with that mentality, you will be like, wait, wh why am I even doing what I'm doing if at some point I'm gonna die, right? That's pretty easy to get past, you know? Like, that's the very entry-level philosophical shit. Why do you do anything if you're gonna die at some point? Nuclear energy is way cleaner. You can also build... <laughs> yeah, I don't know about that last one, but... Wait, infinite champ is off, right? Yeah. Oh, nice trap. Wait, how you, do you deal with that one? Oh, I know how do you deal with that one. I mean, if you loop the screen... Basically, it's just, yeah. That's accurate too, but that's too edgy. Yeah, but it's the same principle. You know, saying why worry about climate change if eventually the earth is gonna blow up, it's like... <laughs> it's the same... The same mentality as why will I do anything if I'm gonna die eventually, right? It's the same logic, just in a obviously higher scale you know both are the same flawed logic that nothing matters in the end well if nothing matters then what's also true is that everything matters because for something to not matter that means that there is something that matters so if nothing matters then saying that everything matters is just a sacred because you don't have anything to compare it with, you know. There has to be that sort of duality, so otherwise you cannot define something. It's like, you know, if in the... Well, I already baited the trap, never mind. Um, it's like saying that every food is tasty. Well, saying that every food is tasty will mean that every food is also nasty because you will have nothing to compare it with. If everything is tasty, then nothing is. You know? Because what is not tasty then? Nothing. Well, then there is no such a thing as, as tasty. And same will apply to, to this. If nothing matters, it wouldn't make any difference to say that everything matters. You know. It's that same logic. There needs to be 
an opposite. Otherwise, there is no definition. Why live when the sun is gonna burn out? Yeah, I know. I mean, I think it has less to do with people being dumb and it has more to do with people not having the time to think and journalists exploiting that. People have their heads occupied with a lot of stuff, you know, in their daily lives. And news outlets, newspapers and all that garbage exploit that. Because they don't have that much energy left to think about what they are reading, they just assume that it's the way it is. Without that much of a second thought. So, I don't blame the people for that, I blame the journalists. Uh, I can't tell you how much I hate journalists. It's really one of those jobs that would be better if it didn't exist. To me. At least not the way it exists in current time. It only dedicated themselves to... You know, informing facts without any sugar coating or any... You know... Any morphing of those facts. Will be a different story, but that's not the case. Journalism is an important show. I don't think that journalism is an important show. It's information spread is the important thing, which not necessarily has to happen through journalism. That's the thing to me. Journalism is one way to spread information, but I think that especially now that you have the internet, I think that something like that is obsolete. There should be, in an ideal world obviously, which doesn't exist and probably will never exist, the ideal thing will be that there will be specialized web pages that only report facts, things that are 100% true and that don't have any extra. Just imagine if, as if it was a blog spot, a, a blog, no, not blog spot, a blog, but just posting things that are the way it is. Like, I don't know, in the day, ads of month Y of year C, president whatever assume the presidency. And that's the end of that. That's the end of the communicate. Of the communication, I mean. That, that, that's the end of the... Of the post. You know? Ideally, there will be multiple web pages specialized in a specific field that only post that. You don't need journalism for that. You just need, you know, the information. The thing is that the way we, well, we, the way most people consume information is through journalism. But journalism by itself is not necessary. But obviously, that will be the case in an ideal world. Since we don't live in an ideal world, that's not the case. You need, well, need. You have journalism because that's one of the only ways to get access to very important information. Will you get that information without people writing it and investigating things? Well, that's the thing. That's why I tell you that it wouldn't exist because that will assume that there will be an organism that dedicates themselves at posting things that are, you know, like that. 
as you say, how will you verify that's true? How will you, you know, trust that source without anyone else telling you their view, their, you know? Uh, yeah, you wouldn't. That's why that's only in an ideal world. But yeah, I guess at the end of the day, you could say that they are necessary. I mean, journalists, sure, right? Since obviously we we don't live in that ideal world, so a non-ideal world obviously requires non-ideal solutions, and the non-ideal solution here will be journalists. Sure, but yeah, it's the way it is. But yeah, AI. I don't know. Dude. There, AI would only be the answer if the AI is autonomous, which that's not gonna happen at all. There is no chance that happens. There is no chance that someone will let that happen, that an AI becoming truly autonomous and without any motivator uh, outside of being neutral, right? Oh, yeah, no. Yeah, I mean, that will be the solution in an ideal world, right? If we're talking about ideal worlds, then yes, AI or something resembling that will be the solution to that. But yeah, no, we, we don't live in that world. Haven't you watched Terminator? I haven't. I, I haven't watched Terminator, no. All I know is that you have Schwarzenegger shooting people. Uh, well, people and I think non-people too, because I think they are robots and shit. You're a moron. But because I didn't watch Terminator, True that the majority of journalists are morons, but there is definitely some that take their job very seriously and are worth respecting. Yeah, but I mean... I don't know. I haven't seen them. I believe you. Because, you know, if you say it, will assume you're telling the truth, but I haven't seen that. I haven't seen a journalist that, you know, haven't seen them because they are a rare breed. Yeah, I know, but even the journalists that I seen that I could consider to be more objective in the sense that they try to not give their opinion, which is what they should do. Don't give me your opinion, that's something for me to form, just give me the fucking facts. Even if you're hiding other facts, at least give me facts that are true and keep your thoughts to yourself. How will you know about journalists? I mean, back when I didn't live where I live now, in dinner time, well, back when I also used to eat dinner, <laughs> uh, you know, my parents watch uh, news outlets, well, news outlets, television programs with journalists on them, whether you want to call them news outlets or, you know, Whatever other term, yeah. Um, I can think of like three in my country, and one of them got killed recently over an investigation he was working on. Damn, that's a shame. Don't you eat dinner? No, I just eat a slice. Well, not a slice, a piece of bread 
and a banana. I don't need anything else for dinner. Um, which, I mean, you might think that it's a bad idea, and it probably is, but so far I hadn't have, I, I didn't have any issues with it. Yes, every day. Um, but you know, it's not like I don't eat lunch. So it's not like I <laughs> never eat, I just don't eat at night. Another reason is because eating at night, a lot of times I remember when I used to eat dinner, it was, uh, I went to, to sleep and it's like my, my stomach felt so heavy and to the point where I had trouble sleeping and that's something that doesn't happen anymore. Uh, like, you know. It is also true that a lot of times I eat dinner very close to when I went to sleep, which is not something you should do. But sometimes uh, it was just the way the, the day went. Sometimes uh, we just ate late, and since I didn't want to wake up late most of the time since I needed to <laughs> you know since I needed to wake up early uh, what I did is to just not eat anything heavy and eventually instead of not eating anything heavy instead I started eating less until I started just eating a piece of bread and a banana and I haven't stopped for like, well, I don't know exactly how much, but definitely some years. And I'm still alive, and I don't feel bad. In fact, I will say that my digestive system is working properly. But, you know, I don't know. But yeah. Uh, wait, why did that happen? Oh yeah, because someone asked me why did I know journalists. Well, yeah. Back when I was still having dinner, I watched, or rather my parents watched that and I was eating with them, so I also indirectly watched these programs with journalists. And 99% of them were garbage. The journalists, I'm saying, right? Like, they were just normal people giving opinion on TV. Like, dude, I don't want to hear your shitty opinion. I don't care. Tell me what happened and shut the fuck up. But they didn't do that. So, you know. Um, it's the way it is. A lot of times, they specifically left important details uh, like away yeah exactly if you are a journalist you should keep your opinion out of it if you're gonna give your opinion do it at the end and clarify that it's your opinion uh, because you know if you don't clarify some things you might think that are part of the, the facts, right? Well, sometimes it's easy to tell when something is an opinion, but some other times it depends on the topic. If the topic is slightly complex, it, it might be hard to tell what's an opinion or why not. A piece of news will always carry the presenter's opinion. I mean, not necessarily. Oh, I mean, in television, yes, because you need to fill the, the, the space with something since you don't have enough content to just do that with facts, right? So you need uh, someone to give opinion okay. to waste that 
uh, television space. So otherwise you don't have enough content. Wait, I don't get the difficulty of this. Can I just take my time? Like, what happens if I go one by one? Like, I feel like I shouldn't do that, but I don't know why. Um, but yeah, in any case, uh, there was, there, there were a couple of journalists that I remember hearing, and they more or less did a good job. But they still, like, it was pretty clear that, you know, wait, what? <laughs> yeah, there is something on the, oh, it loops vertically as well. Like, if you jump, okay, I got you. The problem is, it's that one, it's the second uh, hole. Alright. But yeah, basically, long story short, I hate journalists. The very few that, that, seem, that seem more objective were still very biased. Yes, it's the way it is. Damn, that jump looks so hard to do <laughs> because of that double speed shit. Even this first jump looks super hard to do. It's not like it's a very complex jump at all. All right, here. What? Oh, uh, you have... okay. So that's why they give you infinite jumping and... Uh, this is gonna be such a pain in the ass, dude. <laughs> like, this is so, so painful. And the worst part is that that spike is not even lined up. Like... This is the spike that disappears. And it's lined up with this one, so you have to jump to the right into this. Oh, what a fucking pain in the ass. That's why they give you both infinite jump and, and fast shit. Oh, I forgot. I forgot you were supposed to go back there. Well then again, if you have infinite jumping, I don't even need to land, do I? I mean, I'm landing because of safety, but technically I don't even need to do that. I can't believe this first jump is so hard. Because it doesn't look that hard. But it is. <laughs> already have an issue there. It would be nice if I would look there, but you can't. I guess you can do that. Oh, and that's bullshit. Like, you go there and the spike comes back. That's absolute horseshit. Absolute horseshit. Oh, you can... Wait a second. Maybe I could trigger that. Yeah, but not without dying. I think. Unfortunately. It's probably possible, though. But I don't know if I want to try harder. Because I don't know exactly where the trigger is. 
but technically if I'm like in between these two spikes I might be able to trigger the Etsy right away. Probably not worth it to try, I will assume that it was tested enough, right? <laughs> I want to believe at least. Yeah, it doesn't seem like you can do that without dying. Though that still surprises me because how do you even do it intentionally because that spike comes back, you know? Wait, it didn't come back that time. Huh? But I saw it coming back. Am I stone? I remember the spike coming back. Maybe I am stone. I guess it doesn't. Or the problem maybe is if you touch the ceiling. Like maybe as long as you hover over that it doesn't come back. I don't know. Stoner ass section, that's for sure. Damn it. At least it seems a lot easier now. Uh, the issue is that if there is a trap after that, I will be very pissed. And I wouldn't be surprised. Oh wait. No, I think... You know what happened, probably? Is that instead of the spike coming back, what probably happened is that I forgot to do the third trigger. And since the... Even if you die, the the exit triggers regardless on that last trigger. So maybe that's my confusion, probably. Uh, yeah, but the, the spike doesn't come back. That, that was an invention of mine. Forgetting. I just keep forgetting how the third trigger. Mostly because it's in the same place as the first trigger. So the third trigger, it's like it doesn't exist, but unfortunately it does. I also have trouble to not die when I fall from the last trigger. Uh, it's okay. So how is it going, Kyle? Okay. Got him. Okay, that, that checkpoint was rough. Well, that whole screen was rough. Oh, you... Okay, we have more infinite champing. You get your news from Bun Bun Maru. Bun Bun Maru... The interesting thing is that according to Soon, that's like the worst outlet available. Wasn't this another... Hey... Don't ask me what's reused because I haven't played almost anything, you know, I don't know Maybe Maybe it is reused. I wouldn't know that's for sure But yeah, it may it might be reused But yes, the problem here is infinite needle shunt Infinite Needle... 
Infinite Champ Needle, I meant to say, my bad. Oof, blows. Infinite Champ is still enabled, by the way. You remember our room in stage 8 being reused? This looks like it. Probably. Ooh, that looks so fucking hard. I'm glad there are two checkpoints there, but holy shit. Doing that whole section with double speed? Holy fuck, dude. That's hardcore. I think you can actually do those two gate champs with a single champ. Probably. At least Tengus are good for target practice. I don't know about that. They are a little bit fast. Oh, nice. I was right. You can do those two gates with a single champ. Problem is this. This looks like a problem. Oh, ah, oh, fuck. The speed is so fast that it's just hard to control. Like, it's overwhelmingly fast. Missile is faster? I don't know about that. For all we know, we could be moving in Mach 3. Just like in the Sonic games that apparently were running at the speed of sound. But, you know. Just so the game is playable, we run at what looks like slow speed. Mach 3 is very slow. Whatever mock you want, then. Oof, got it. Oh, that's a very evil champ right before the checkpoint. This is, by the way, from... This is from KOF 13. This is the final boss theme from KOF 13. In case anyone cares, I mean. <laughs> Apparently this guy is a KOF fan. Well, if this guy is a KOF fan, why the fuck did he use a theme before from KOF 2003? Literally the worst KOF game if we ignore 12. How can you call yourself a KOF fan and promote 2003? God damn it. It's okay. At least you're trying... You're trying to redeem yourself by using KOF 13 soundtrack. So, I, I accept it. I accept your apology. Should I? I guess I should go back. That champ is gonna be an issue. This final boss, by the way, the, the final boss that this song belongs to is extremely disappointing. Probably one of the easiest final bosses in the franchise. And not to mention that it's literally a recolor of a regular character. 
so quite disappointing. Also, not having this song on loop is a problem. Because the introduction of this song pretty much takes like a, a minute. Like half the song is the introduction. So not having this song on loop is a mistake, buddy. <laughs> That's a little bit of a mistake. I think the song is called Diabolosis. Yes, I know nobody asked, but just in case someone was curious. Well, then again, the intro is pretty cool with that guitar, I gotta tell you. Uh, feels a little bit lame to hear it repeated, to go to only be the intro. Damn, I died to that? Alright, that's surprising. This final boss... Basically... The idea of the lore of KOF 13 is that the character Ash disappears from the timeline. Uh, from the timeline. Which means that nobody remembers him and that he should, like, fully disappear from the world. But you know, since SNK knows that Ash sells, they revive him in KOF 15. So basically, fuck the lore and all of that. Well, then again, lore in fighting games, right? Probably one of the most useless things you could think of. Oh, yeah. Ash was supposed to fully disappear after this boss fight. But he did not. Unfortunately. <laughs> It's okay, though. Okay, I mean... If you're planning on making a series that has more than one installment, right? Like a series that it's supposed to be long-running. And you have a very popular character and you care about making money don't kill that character because otherwise you will have to rely on resurrection and that's probably one of the lamest things that you can do in any setting unless the whole setting is based around resurrection and shit like that but if that's not the case don't kill your popular characters that's not a good idea Dark Souls. I mean, Dark Souls has characters. But no, I don't mean about those characters. I mean characters that are full flesh. I don't mean NPCs with a name. <laughs> I don't. I mean, sure, they are characters by definition, but. Yeah, no, I, I don't mean those. I mean characters, important characters, and in fighting games, basically any character that is playable is important, so in a fighting game, if your character is popular, don't kill it. Then again, as I say before, in a fighting game, you can sort of get away with it, because, you know, as I say before, lore in fighting games, who gives a shit, right? Wait, where, what is this gonna teleport me to? Oh, it's just a random teleport. Uh, I thought one of these things was supposed to teleport you to another one of those shiny thingies. Well, I'm glad that's not the case, because none of the other ones are close to checkpoints. I 
wonder what the... Oh, the exit is at the top right. You get there with another one of these teleports. Wow, I'm surprised it let me save with that sham. You know, I gotta admit, the needle in this game is slightly harder of what I'm used to. But the checkpoint, the, the checkpoint placement is very forgiving. Remember that guitar riff from the final stage theme of Best Guy 2? KOF seems to be popular. Oh yeah, yeah. KOF is super popular with Korea, yes. It's extremely popular with Korea. And also China and also Mexico. Those three countries are probably the biggest KOF consumers in the world. And yes, Korea is particularly religious with it. For what I understand, they mostly play 2002 or 1998. But yeah. And for what I also understand, China particularly prefers 97. So yeah. KOF is huge in Korea. But yes, you are right that this was at the final stage of I wanna be the best guy too. I remember it was like a hell area. That I remember getting there accidentally because I press a button that apparently was a warp and I got there in my first screen then I realized I wasn't supposed to be there but yeah, I remember that it was kind of funny but yes, a KOF is a cultural phenomenon in those three countries a lot of people say that KOF is huge in Latin America, but I wouldn't say that's true. I mean, it's not that huge here. I mean, it's popular, way more popular than in a country than the USA. But it's not like it's a game that that many people give a shit about, you know. And that applies to any fighting game, really. People here mostly just play... I mean, first of all, my country, Argentina, right? Doesn't really have a big gaming community outside of the big titles like League of Legends, Counter-Strike Global Offensive, you know, that sort of stuff. But for fighting games, there I, there is no community here. I mean, sure, there is probably a small community in a very specific place in city of Buenos Aires. Yeah, most likely. But it's not big enough. But yeah, I think that in South Korea and China, it's a different story. And again, China in particular is a very big country, you know. So saying that it's popular in China doesn't really say much. Or like it's popular in some regions, I would assume. I mean it's not a it's not an exaggeration to say that China could pretty much be a continent. China is huge and so different uh, culturally inside of China, right? So yeah. Korea on the other hand is smaller. And yes, it is very popular in Korea. Obviously, probably not as popular as StarCraft. I think that StarCraft is huge in Korea. For some reason. But yes, StarCraft apparently is one of those games that to this day still has tournaments. Big tournaments in Korea. I mean, one of the streamers that I often watch, well, in fact, I, I also watch him a little bit today, uh, Punko is his name, uh, he plays a lot of KOF, and a lot of SNK fighters in general, like Fatal Fury, Art of Fighting, you know, 
And a lot of other uh, fighting games that you probably never heard of in your life, and I haven't either until I saw him. One of them I think is called Karnov's Revenge. I never heard of that fighting game in my life, but there, it is a fighting game. I think it also was developed by SNK. And just like that, there are a lot of fighting games that have never heard of, and I see him play, like in, in, in arcade mode. Also, this checkpoint looks ridiculously hard. Well, more like ridiculously hard, ridiculously long. I mean, look at this. Like, basically, you need to zigzag, then corner jump. In well, this is. I think this is not that hard. I died to it, but this jump is not that hard. But then you basically go into a diagonal jump. Maybe with a line, this is free. This jump is not easy at all. But then it's not even over. Look at this shit, dude. There is no checkpoint in between all of this shit and and this. So if you want to try that, you need to get through this zigzag. Through the corner jump. To the diagonal jump and then you can worry about that. This is very hard. If this is not the last screen, I will be surprised because I think that this is the first checkpoint that I, I, I feel that it's actually quite long. Part of me wants to think that hogging the right wall for this fall will make me beat the diagonal. I think that part of me is delusional though, but I guess it doesn't hurt to try. Oh, it actually works! Damn, alright, see that's why you need to try this kind of thing. Problem is that this jump... Oof, alright, I'll take that. So here we have some sort of gate champ, and what is this? How do you even call this champ? It's like a weird diamond champ that is not a diamond champ. I'm not even sure if I should champ twice or once, but this looks extremely hard. I thought that a full champ would work, but it doesn't. That was a full champ, full single champ, obviously. But no, it doesn't work. Damn it. At least the diagonal jump is a non-issue. That's what's important. Nice, that works. Alright. And I think I was right that that's the last uh, screen before the final boss. What are the, these buttons, though? Oh, I can't press those buttons. Alright, well, fuck you, too. Wait, what do I do here? Huh? Oh, those are not real walls. What was that sound? Do I want to know what that sound was? It introduced that to you for the boss? Oh, I see. I'm still curious to see what this does. Oh, never mind, it's the same shit in both. You can tell by the sound effect and stuff. Alright, so let's see what this is gonna be. Boss Magnus. This is probably from... Well, you say this game is Korean. This could be from a game like Dungeon Fighter. <laughs> For all I know. I don't know where it is from, but... It could be from something like that.
Okay, how am I supposed to dodge this guy? Do I jump over him? I'm assuming. Unless he has no hitbox. I don't think that would be the case. This looks like a Maple Story character. Oh, I see. Yeah, that would be the case too. I haven't played that game, but I've seen that usually they have this sort of design. Wait, I got hit. Oh, I have two lives? And that's pretty generous of you. I actually have two lives. Interesting. And that's very, very... Bear Wait, three lives, actually. Uh, well, I don't know when I got hit. <laughs> I, probably in, in, in one of those patterns. Damn, that's quite generous. Getting three lives for a boss like this one. See, it doesn't even seem like he has that much health. Considering, I mean, the patterns he has, right? That attack is the one that is killing me. <laughs> Those iframes? Well, at least the iframes means that I don't need to worry about spamming. Because if the boss had no iframes... Well, if the boss had no iframes and this amount of health, he would be dead super fast. But I mean... At least I don't have to... Wait, I want to see what his hitbox is. Wait, he doesn't have a hitbox. I was right. He actually has no hitbox. Well, that's weird. That's a weird decision. But sure, why not? <laughs> I prefer it that way. Well, then again, him having hitbox or not doesn't matter for some attacks like this one. Because if you're close enough, you're gonna get fucked anyways. No, I got it. itself shorter but smaller I'm surprised that the shield gets introduced that early and by that early I mean before the boss because I mean it's quite obvious what the purpose of the shield is Has. I mean, he basically has 
that attack where he falls down. Same, and I got hit. See, that's what I get for talking. I got hit by the bouncing balls that somehow belong to the same attack. Damn it. Alright. Maybe I underestimated this boss. Like, even with three lives, this might still be hard. Not as hard as it will be with one, obviously. But... I cannot underestimate this guy. Turn out of fire? No. It's part of the difficulty to need to dodge while, while worrying about shooting. was a pretty anticlimactic end. <laughs> Tim, I expected something else considering that the boss should vanish like that. Alright, sure, why not? <laughs> uh, she, she, thanks. Well, that was a pretty, pretty cool... Yeah, Puyo. You get Puyo. Yeah, that was a pretty cool game. Um, I mean, the bosses were clearly the highlight to me, but at the same time, the um, Subterranean Needle World, interesting name, um, but yeah, uh, what was I all to say? Oh yeah, that even the needle that I'm usually not a big uh, fan of is uh, something that thanks to the way the checkpoints are laid out are uh, very very good you know like it's something for me that is not good at needle uh, it's very it's very nice to to have those kind of checkpoints all right and here you have the obligatory stage selection screen, which is always appreciated. Uh, now you can return here with the backspace key. Gotcha. Alright. Can you die here, by the way? Oh, you cannot die. The game doesn't let you die. What if I jump up? No, you get teleported back. Alright. So yeah, that was pretty pretty cool. A uh, pretty nice fun game. Honestly, I wouldn't I wouldn't hesitate to put this fun game in like my top five. Again, I didn't play that many fun games in the first place. But of all the ones that I played, this one was pretty cool. Pretty solid all around. Like. I don't think there was a part of this game that I thought them. What a fucking pain in the ass. There again, there are some needle parts that, as I said, are quite hard for me. But the, the checkpoints made sure that it's not that big of a deal. 
Oh yeah. Uh, she, she's for I wanna be the the citadel. Uh, amazing job, amazing job by the developer. I forgot the name of. But yeah, that Korean de developer, good stuff. 